name of this workshop is Imagining Spaces. Okay, so we're going to talk about interior and architecture pho photography, but a little bit more than that, instead of just purely technical interior and architecture photography, we're going to talk a little bit about the idea of spaces, the concept of working within an environment. Okay? Um, if you were here for last presentation that I did, uh, which was on the creative narrative, there's going to be some crossover with that because, you know, as I said in that workshop, the idea of a narrative and a story carries over into every genre of photography that we shoot. Whether you're shooting landscapes or portraits, spaces, uh, travel, there's always a, a narrative, a story that's, that's playing in our photographs. I'm going to start off by just talking about examining your images. Okay, so I'll take you through a little bit of a workflow that I do with my images, um, and then if we have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, so recently I was photographing at the Aga Khan Museum up in Toronto, super beautiful building. Um, and uh, it's, a very, it's a very zen, like beautiful space with these huge soaring lines, which for an architectural photographer is super exciting. So, like I get to line things up and I use my tilt shift because often when I'm doing uh, architectural photography, I'll be using a tilt shift lens. You guys know the concept of that. So very similar to um, like shifting bellows on our old um, four by five cameras. So, you know, this gets you very close. If you need to shift your uh, plane up or down or across, across you can do that. Um, but it's never gonna be spot on, 100% spot on. I saw this image, shot it, had a friend of mine walk through it um, just to give a sense of scale. Because often when you're, when you're shooting architecture, you can lose that, the concept of scale. How, like, how big is something? Uh, if you have something to compare it against, it's, sort of, it's, it's easier to, to understand that sense of scale. So I wanted to have her walking through there. Also because everything is so linear, to break it up with something organic, like a person walking, I think it was a nice. So if you, if you look at this, it's not, there's a little like banner off on the side there. Lines aren't perfectly even. There's a weird color cast to it. So I'll take this, uh, take this image, open it in Photoshop. There's a, there's a line tool that you can draw down in Photoshop if you just have your, your V clicker. You go up to the top bar, you drag it down, you drag it from the side. It's a really terrific tool. If you're trying to get straight lines in your image, put them in. Correct your lines, go to free transform, um, perspective, or distort. And once you get everything, once they're, once they're in line, you just drag them away and they disappear. Um, so I looked at this, I put my markers in, I'm like, I'm pretty close, like I'm pretty good. If you see on the left-hand side of the image, the, um, you know, it veers off to the side a little bit. So I had some corrections to do. Also, I don't actually go through and circle all the things that I need to retouch out, but to show you guys. So I'll go through, banner needs to go. Um, where the little crosses are, that's just like plus, like add, add some exposure to that, open up those shadows a bit. Um, some few things that I needed retouching. For me, you know, we spoke about this before as well. There, we really have no rules as to what we have to do, right? We're not, we're not documentary photographers that are photographing um, in war-torn countries and have to represent exactly what's happening there. You know, those, those photographers, they're not retouching their images. You don't take anything out, you don't put anything in, because it needs to be a pure representation of what you're photographing. As narrative photographers or architecture, you can work with your images so that it represents your vision of how you see the space. So for me, if I, if I look at something and I'm like, ah, you know what, these lights up here at the top, this is a little close to the edge of frame and it doesn't, it doesn't really feel good to me, I just take them out. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not misleading what the space is like. It's just a matter of going through and tidying up. So I'll go through, take out some light fixtures just to clean it up, um, bring the exposure up. You know, that's my final image. It was a bit of a color cast. Like, I know her jacket was yellow. It was a beautiful yellow. It was looking a little green. It had a green cast to it. Um, so corrected that in post, and that's the, that's the image that you fix up. These are minor tweaks, right? Making sure that your color is good, making sure your lines are straight, retouching out anything that's, that's distracting from the image or telling the story of, of what that space is about. Um, and that was the final image. I mean, whether the yurt was a plus or a minus is subjective. 
I wasn't going to retouch a yurt out, so, you know. I, no, no, I couldn't have. Um, another example in Havana, in Cuba. Um, beautiful, beautiful space. I mean, I walked in here, got my tripod out, because I frequently travel with my tripod. It's just a little uh, portable one that I um, strap onto the back of my backpack, but it's great to have for occasions like this. It's also a pain because it's you know one extra thing you have to carry, but you know sometimes I get to hoist it off on whoever I'm traveling with, and get them to carry it for me. Um, but you know we we were doing a, a tour of Havana. We were going pretty quickly. I didn't have a lot of time to like stop and and really get everything perfect. So I brought this image um, again into Photoshop. I looked at it. Okay, there are a couple of things. If you see this horizontal line from left to right, it's a little skewed. It's, it's not quite right. Um, looks like the, the building's kind of sloping off to the left. It's an easy fix, you know? Bring in your guidelines, and you have enough to work off here. So I'll put two on that column on the left, because that's a good guide of what to keep straight. Same with the columns on the right. And then horizontal line, a little bit of retail. I want to open up the ceiling a touch. There's a light switch. I don't need the light switch there. That light switch isn't, it's not telling me anything. It's not adding to my image, so I'll take it out. It's going to be cleaner, and for me, that's an aesthetic judgment that I make as a photographer, because this is, this is my image, you know? And I, I want it to represent the way that I see it. Light switch goes, little thing in the back, the fire escape sign, that goes. Um, little color cast, brighten it up, bit of saturation, and that's your final image, right? So in in, I don't know, five minutes in Photoshop, we go from here to there. And that represents my experience in that space, OK? This, this, this makes sense to me. Um, so take the time when you go through your images. Take the time to assess them and break them down and say, OK, if this is an image that I actually want, I want to put on my website, I want to put in my portfolio, even you want to stick it on Instagram. Whatever you're putting out there, make sure that image represents you. Don't, don't just like sort of put it out there because you feel like you have to upload an image or you need to have more photos in your portfolio. Like really sit with your image, let it speak to you, and then take a little bit of time, make those changes so you, so you make that image sing. Um, example of when all the rules go out the window. Right? So when I'm shooting architecture, I want nice straight lines. I want everything to line up, unless I don't. You know, This is an example of that. So I shot this. I was doing the beta testing for the Fuji XE3. It's a tiny little pocket camera. It's terrific. I had a, th I think this was a 35 mil lens. May have been a 10 to 24. It was in Las Vegas. I was running around. I got this beautiful sunset. And the buildings there are, are extra. You know, there are mirrors, and there's so, there's so much going on. I wasn't trying to line everything up and make it perfectly symmetric. I wanted it, because it's such a, an abstract place, I wanted it to represent it in an abstract way. So I didn't put my camera on a tripod and use a tilt shift to try and line it up. I used the idea of abstracting an image and, t and stepping away from the rules of what architecture photography is supposed to be to make something that was a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interesting. You know, buildings have these amazing skins on them. So the skins are the, the kind of covering that, that's on the building. With this one, the way that the light was, was interplaying off it, I thought was really fascinating. You know, do you know exactly what the building looks like? No. But do you always need to know? You don't. You know, this is just a, this is a, a little slice. You can use your imagination and imagine what this building looks like bigger. But for me, it was about, about these lines, about the geometry. Because when you're shooting spaces, it comes, a lot of it is about shape and geometry and lines. Um, and once you learn to photograph those properly, you can then not photograph them properly. Um, and you get an interesting, the same thing with this. There are really no straight lines in this. But for me, it was about that interplay of, of building an environment. So with this mirrored, uh, mirrored exterior, palm trees in the sky. It's just, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting way to photograph architecture to start incorporating environmental aspects into it um, and just disregarding those rules. Sometimes they work and sometimes they're good to step away from. Um, question that I get asked a lot, 
So when you're shooting interiors, natural light, do you use natural light? Do you use strobes? Um, how does it work? And it's a really good question because sometimes you don't want to be lugging 50 pounds of lighting gear to shoot a space. It's not practical. It's expensive. Um, so sometimes you get away with just shooting in natural light, but it, again, it comes down to what your intention is. Okay. So this uh, at Palm Springs at the Lautner compound. So John Lautner, famous um, architect, did some beautiful work. Um, this was shot in natural light. Same thing with this. There was we're shooting in Palm Springs in the middle of the day. You're not short on light. Like it's <laughs> it's everywhere. You can't escape it. So. You know, I photograph these, and what I'll do is I'll set my camera up on a tripod, and I'll take a bracket. Okay, so maybe like one stop either way. So I'll find my, I'll find my exposure for the highlights. Okay, I'll expose for that, and then I'll expose for the interiors. And I'll take those two images, bring them into Photoshop, and then start layering them together. What I don't necessarily recommend is hitting that HDR button, right? and having your computer program just mesh your exposures together. It doesn't feel right. There's something not, there's like a murkiness, like a m sort of muddiness that comes out of those images. But also the computer's doing the work for you. It's like shooting, it's like shooting your camera on um, automatic. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I don't care how good your camera is, don't shoot on automatic. Because then the camera's making all the decisions for you. Like how much depth of field do you get in your image? Well, you don't know, the camera's deciding for you. You know, I, I'm a big proponent of just shoot everything manual. Just know your camera so well that when you're in a situation, you know how fast your camera needs to be. If it's on a, if it's on, it's on a tripod, it doesn't matter. You know, shoot a one second, two second, five second exposure, it doesn't matter. So then it comes down to your ISO. You don't wanna, you don't wanna ram that up there. You don't wanna have grain or noise in your image, so you keep that low. Um, you use all of these tools that you have to establish what your image is gonna look like. You know, for example, with, with this one here, I wanted that chair to be in focus and then the room to drop away, okay? Because um, you know what the, you know what the, the room looks like, but, this adds a little bit more, a little bit more mood, if not everything is in focus. But that was an aesthetic decision that I made when I was photographing the space. And if my camera was on automatic, probably the whole thing would be sharp, and it would be a different image. But it was my decision as a photographer to do that. Um, so we're photographing this beautiful space. Um, but this is so. This was in in natural light. So you take those you take those exposures, right? And then you start building up your image. So I'll have the the exposure for the highlights in the background. Put my exposure for the interiors in, and then I'll just start painting it in. Okay. So you guys know with layers in Photoshop, you have your different layers. Soft brush at maybe 30% opacity, and you just start painting in the interior until it feels good to you, right? You don't want to have it where the light's coming from some inexpl inexplicable place, right? You work with the dynamics of the light in that space so it makes sense. Because when you look at it, you want to you know, OK, there's a window here. The light's coming from here. That makes sense to me. So don't change the, like, the rationale of lighting, um, but just work with it to slowly build up your image until it gets to a nice, balanced place you'll get a significantly better result than if you just HDR your photos. Um, same thing here, natural light. I think there were two exposures for this. Um, but again, Palm Springs in the summertime, it was 107 degrees. <laughs> 107 degrees outside. Um, you don't need a flash for this. Uh, but you know, with this shot, I was set, I would, this was the first photo that I took of this space, the house owner. Um, it was very kindly opening everything up for me so we could get this space. And I was literally setting the camera up on the tripod and I saw her go and push this door and I was like, okay, snap this shot, then photograph the rest of the space. And when I, in post I was going through and I was like, what about that shot where she was pushing the door? And for me, this is like 
this, this, this environment is about indoor-outdoor, right? So this tells the story of, of that, of that space, okay? The, this door by the pool, all of this opens up. Would it be the same photo without her? No, it's going to be a totally different photo. Maybe you don't understand the dynamics of how the space opens up. Um, but again, that was a decision, because I have this photo without her in it. It just doesn't resonate as much. Um, example on the flip side, I was shooting the space. They wanted something super dynamic, very poppy. I mean, it's pink. Everything is pink, pink walls, pink furniture. Um, plus, we were shooting in the late afternoon, and we had super strong sunlight pumping in through that window. When, and you can see the light. Like, you can see the light falling on the furniture, falling on the, on the, on the rugs. For me, I wanted to balance that. Right? So I wanted to balance the interior to bring that to the same exposure that the outside was. So I used strobes. Brought that up. You get a crispness to the image. You get a balance. And you also don't get any, any sort of um, weird lines when you try and paint in a higher exposure over a highlight. So it feels a little bit more natural. Um, because here, the, the light is as much about, like, about the space as the space is, because the light helps craft that experience. So it's important to, to illustrate that. Um, if, I, if I shot that in the morning when there was no light coming through there, again, it would be a very different photo. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that feeling of, hey, I'm in New York, I'm in a penthouse, I have this beautiful sunlight that's coming through. That light is as important as the shaggy pink armchair. It was very comfortable. Uh, same thing at Ralph Lauren. I shoot a lot uh, at Ralph Lauren. This was a space lit by two overhead cans. Right? It's not flattering. That's not cute. You end up with two big hotspots. Everything else is dark. But it's like a really sexy, evocative room. Right? I wanted to kind of represent that a bit. So I just had, um, I had two strobes, one on either side of the doorway. Made sure that the one on the on the right-hand side was stronger, so it had a directional light that was coming through. Kept it quite low, so it cut across that blanket, and it gives it a mood, right? I was using lighting to craft a mood. So could it have been done in brackets and no lighting? Yeah, you could have, but you're not going to get those highlights and shadows. You're not going to get that sense, that like, evocative sense of light. You know, same thing with this. They wanted light bright, but when you're shooting in a, this is at the the Madison Avenue store. Um, you know, it's an it's an interiors of a store. All of your light comes from these ceilings, but we wanted we wanted a little bit of like the shadow of the palm tree on the background. So we bring in we bring in strobes. Um, example on the left. This is in Mystique at, at a property. This uh, with the the vase and the light, like it's. It's obvious that there is like, unnatural light there, that there's a strobe put on there. Um, but that was part of my intention. I wanted it to be a little abstract, a little bit weird. You know, you have this beautiful view, and we have this amazing, we lucked out with this beautiful sunset in the background. Uh, but we wanted to like, capture something that was kind of dynamic and kind of punchy. Um, I didn't want the, the lamp and the vase to be silhouetted. So it kind of breaks that rule of like, don't use light if you can tell where the light's coming from. That's kind of what I wanted. And the same thing with don't put something dead in the center of your frame. That's what I wanted. But it's my choice to make that. And that's part of my aesthetic. You know, The one on the right, there was not enough light coming in from the side window to get this beautiful kind of silhouetted tray of fruit. So I just had a strobe outside. Direct, it was on an umbrella, I think directed it through, so there was a directional light coming from a source, lighting up that scene. Pop of color makes it stand out. Um, I could have done it without, but for me, I wanted, that was the aesthetic that I was after. Um, downtown, the Beekman Hotel, they have a beautiful new lounge space. Um, it is dark. <laughs> it's dark. It's very sexy, but it's very dark. Um, but in order to illustrate what the space feels like, Again, we needed to bring in lighting. And using this as an example, this is how I'll start building light up, one step at a time. So there are three, three strobes on this. 
The most important thing was to show this, this space in here is the boiler room, okay? They now have banquettes in there. It's very, like, very cool. Um, but we wanted to show that inside a boiler room, you can drink your cocktail. So there wasn't enough light coming from the two little dim overhead lights. So we brought in a strobe, brought that up, so you can actually see, you can see the texture of the banquettes. You can, you can picture yourself in that space. So that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the center point of the image, right? But then you have this beautiful brickwork over on this side here, but you have that beautiful brickwork and you want to show that texture. So again, we had another, another strobe that was coming from out past the doorway, just to show the texture. Same thing with the mannequin, just a little edge light, just to give it dimension. And so that, that was a, a multi-step process of just building that up. Not to make it look unnatural, but so that it, it illustrates the space that you're working with. Again with Ralph Lauren, to capture that mood, to capture a sense of something. Because you have to have intention, you have to have purpose when you're photographing something. Like what, you're not just taking a photo for the sake of it. You know, so for this, we wanted a feeling of being inside you know, the sexy bar, having that light spill across the drinks, um, spill across the jacket on the table, wouldn't have been possible without, but then using lighting and figuring out what the story is that you want to tell, instead of just like throwing some strobes up in the just to get an exposure. Use your, if you're going to use artificial light, use it with intention, like use it with a purpose, and say, okay, well, how am I going to use this to tell my story. Um, Christmas time with this beautiful fireplace, that was, for me, the centerpiece was this roaring fire, fire going. So I exposed for that fireplace and then just brought the rest of the room up to match that. But not just blasting it into the ceiling, having it directional, having it looking like it's actually coming from somewhere. Same thing when we're talking about these overhead cans, like we got spotlights spotlights on these three girls, because they're the centerpiece. You walk into the store, want those to be illuminated. Then you have to bring everything else up with it in order to balance things out. Same thing with this. You know, neon lights, spotlights on mannequins, using light to bring it up. So that's kind of, when people ask about using natural versus artificial light, um, it comes down to your intention. What do, you want, what do you want to achieve? Um, mood is one of those things, it's, it's like an intangible thing. Like, what's a, what's a mood? Right? How do you capture mood in a space? Um, I like to use this, this image to illustrate kind of capturing a mood of architecture. So this is at the Amman Resort in Dominican Republic. Beautiful architecture, very open, very, very like free-flowing, dynamic lines, this beautiful re reflection pool there. But it's not just about the space, it's about the environment. So this was at 5.30 in the morning, I think, some crazy hour um, when I should be in bed. Um, but we were out there photographing, photographing the sunrise, and we were lucky, we had a beautiful day, we had a beautiful morning, but we used the space, we used the architecture to show that interplay between inside and outside by stepping back, having the architecture wrap around us, and then including the environment. You know, and there's a sort of sense that, that you could step into this, you could step into the image. If it was just of the space, it wouldn't be the same. If it was just of the sunrise, it wouldn't be the same. But it's about finding that balance, finding the relationship between architecture and environment that we talked about before. Same thing here. And that, that was with artificial light, just to bring up that foreground, show the detail, but have the main focus being on that sunrise. Using someone in here, so we had this space, uh, we had this shot of the bar, had it without anyone in there, and I was like, you know what, this is, this is beautiful. Like, I love the, the way the architecture is, the latticing on the wood, it's beautiful, but I don't really, I'm not inspired to go and sit there. It doesn't, I'm, it doesn't like scream to me, hey, come and sit down and have a drink. Right? So we brought in the bartender, just had him mixing up a drink, and all of a sudden you can kind of imagine yourself pulling out a stool and sitting down. Something we looked at before, um, 
you know, the, the image on the left is about this, the architecture of the space. It's about the, the fountain, the texture of the, the iron and the stone, um, and then coming in and capturing a detail. Because the thing is, if you're photographing spaces, it doesn't all have to be from back here, you know? Spaces and interiors exist on all different planes. So go in and photograph little details. Photograph the big wide spaces and then come in and focus on something and capture, capture the little moments, capture the little vignettes because that's going to help tell your story. Same thing with this, you know, working to, working to make that space feel as though you want to step into it. Again, Sunrise, I was speaking in the last workshop about how important it is if you are trying to capture a space, do it in, do it in the most ideal setting. So for me, this was, you know, we're in, in Baja, we're on the beach. There is a beautiful sunrise that's going to make everything look golden and gorgeous. I'm going to get up for that and I'm going to photograph that. And that's going to help set the mood for my images. So especially here, you have this tree with these gorgeous glass hearts, that's going to pick up the light that's around it. It's going to come alive. But if you shoot that in the middle of the day, it's going to be super harsh. Everything is going to be very, um, very aggressively lit. So it made sense to me to tell the, like, to set the mood for this image. Do it at sunrise. Do it when, when the, the light is soft. Could have done it at sunset, um, but the light would have been behind me. And it would, again, it would have been a different, it would have been a different image. Um, there's actually an app that I use a lot called Sunseeker. You guys ever heard of that? It's like an uh, app on your phone, and it tells you at what time of the day the sun is going to be where. And it's crazy. You can actually like, pick up your phone and follow the sun around like that, and it tells you at what time the sun comes up and where it's going to be. And that's a really useful tool, and I use that a lot when I'm photographing. Because I don't want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and find out that the sun's like over there and it's not anywhere. Cause I, I should just go back to bed, save my time. Um, so I'll use that. I'm like, OK, if I'm going to get up, where's the sun going to be? At what time is it going to be there? And that's a really helpful tool. And that's it coming up, sunrise. I was literally the only person out there. It was very, it's very beautiful, but you know, no one else is going to get up at that hour on vacation. Why would you? It's called a vacation for a reason. But, you know, I love what I do. We all love what we do, right? So if that means getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to get a cool shot, it's what you do. Again, just capturing a mood, capturing, capturing a sense of place. This is in Havana. You know Havana? We know Havana. We know architecture, beautiful, old, crumbling architecture and busted up old cars. You know, this is as much an architecture shot as it is maybe a lifestyle shot. That light is helping to craft the geometry of your space, of the architecture, but the car gives it context. Same thing with this. You know, you take the car out, it's a, it's a nice shot of, of Cuban architecture in Havana. You put it in, it has something, it has a mood to it, it has a sense of something. And by the way, Havana is an amazing destination to photograph. I was there, um, what, a couple of months ago, March? Um, and I was running around with my GFX. So I have the, the Fujifilm GFX. It's their uh, digital medium format camera. It's super nice. Um, and it just it, it produces these really beautiful, incredible, rich, very high resolution photos. And again, like spaces. Space, space can be anything. You know, space can just be a rocking chair leaned up against the wall. But using the tools that you have, so using the, the grills to compose my image, they frame it for me. Okay, So I could have stepped in past the grates, and it would have been a different photo. Now, stepping back, it creates a natural frame for me. And it also creates context. And it creates layers. Because you want layers in your photo. You want there to be more than just looking at it, and you're like, that's great. It's nice. You want to feel like you can get in to that image, step into it, and walk through. So here we have like we have things happening on multiple planes. We've got the washing in the background. We have the lighting in the armchair that's sitting there in the middle, and then we have that front 
with the grill. So you really have that sense that you can walk through the photograph. You know, using a, using a color palette, very, very neutral, very white color palette, and then it's like a little hit of contrast, a little hit of color. You know, something like this, again, this is as much a cocktail shot as it is an interior shot. Like, you know what this space feels like, right? You know what this space is about. Is it about the drink? Is it about the space? Or is it about both? And again, this is using, um, using light to help craft a story. You know, you want to feel like you want to, you, you want to be in that space. You want to pull out that chair. You want to sit by the fire. So use elements, like have, with here we've got the chair that's, that's open, that this, you get a little bit of the desk. You don't have to be so blatant to be like, here's the desk, and here's the chair, and here's the lamp, here's everything. Sometimes it's nice to, to crop in, so you just get a hint of things, and then let the viewer imagine the rest of it. Um, so people in images, I love using people in images. You know, I think it helps tell a story. Um, sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you don't need it. Um, but I'll just give you some examples. Uh, this is again at the, uh, this is at the Ismaili Center next to the Aga Khan in Toronto. And this wall is incredible. It was carved by a father and son. And they, they spent, I think, three months hand carving these panels. Um, and it was beautiful. And then there was this natural light coming in through the window. And I took that photo, I was like, wow, that's beautiful. I really love that. Um, and then this girl walked by and I was like, <laughs> excuse me, ma'am, <laughs> she's a wonderful artist. I was like, can you just, just, just stand there for me, look out the window? And she did, got two shots, said thank you very much. Um, and for me, because everything is so, it's so angular in this, to have a person in that space, and also, you know, she's wearing black, everything's white, this harsh light that's coming through, you know, just where she stood. For me, this is an effective use of space and people. Um, would have been different without it. That space again. Makes you wonder, like, what's going on in the image? You know, this guy's there, what's he thinking about? This is obviously a very reflective, meditative room. And the light helps tell that story as well, right? Because I saw where the light was coming from. I ran inside that room because I knew what it was going to look like on the inside before I even walked in there. I knew we were going to get this beautiful silhouette of the lattice work. Put a person in there. That made sense to me. But that was part of my narrative that I was trying to tell in this image. So an example of that's in the same resort that I took those sunrise photos. But this is in the middle of the day when I said, you know, that light was going to be super harsh and it was going to be really intense and contrasty. Well, that's what I wanted. Because I knew that light was going to come through, it was going to hit these, um, these kind of wooden roofy bits. <laughs> I don't know if there's a technical term for that. Um, and then cast this really dynamic shadow, right? That's cool. Like, that's interesting. That adds depth to the image. If that light wasn't there, if it was just all one, it, it wouldn't be the same. Um, and this I didn't set up. The guy was just walking up the stairs, snapped a couple of shots. But for me, that told more than just the space alone. Again, it comes down to layers. So this is architecture. It's lighting, and then it's lifestyle. I mean, red beanie. Someone's in a red beanie walking past a mural with red. I mean, it's, it's a given. The same, so this is, you know, this is in a restaurant at, uh, at the Amman Resort. Um, there's a sense of, of like dynamic movement just by having someone walk through the frame. Because we didn't, want, we didn't want to stage this up with all of the tables, plates, and cups, and silverware, and all that kind of stuff. It's too much. It's too busy. So we stripped it down, just kept a, a single flower on each of the tables, and then had someone walk through the frame. And that told enough. That told enough of the story. in Havana. You know, the, the architecture there is truly, I mean, it's super beautiful um, and very evocative. This is about the architecture. I mean, where have you seen these doors before, ever? It's amazing. They're so beautiful and they're so, the way that you see that paint, you see the patina on the walls and you, you know where you are, right? But by adding these people in, and I didn't add this, I was walking past and they were standing there. 
And I saw him and I was like, what's, like, what's the story here? This, like, the mother or the grandmother, they're waiting for someone. Who are they waiting for? But this is about architecture. It's just added a little bit of narrative in there. And that's something that you can choose as you're working with your images and you're working in spaces. Um, does it make sense? If it makes sense, give it a try. If it doesn't, don't. Or do it and then look at both and see what works for you, for the story that you want to tell. Because that's the beauty that we have now. We're in a digital age and we can photograph as much as we want. We're not burning film. We're not spending our lives in the dark room processing our images. So try something and try it a different way. See what works. And again, when we were talking about using people um, for scale and for size, you know, you know now how big this space is because you have something to compare it against. So whether it's a car or a person or you know anything, anything that you that, that we know the size of, we can then use as a gauge for scale. Um, so again, this 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 image wouldn't have been the same without the people in there. It would have been a nice big space, but you have no idea how big until you see this. There's also something about you know, shooting this in Havana, a country that's in Cuba, it's changing so rapidly. I mean, in the eight years since I was there last, it has changed immensely. So there's something like a conceptual narrative in there of just of two women with their hands on their hips kind of standing on the top of a hill in Havana looking out. You know, It's sort of told a little bit more instead of looking out towards the future. I don't know. That just made sense. <laughs> um, so this is one that we actually, in the last workshop, dove a little bit deeper into, um, because this is an example of a shot. These are the shots that I took. Um, the first one on the top left there. I was like, great, it's a beautiful day bed. We've got these lanterns can casting a nice light. Like, this is terrific. I'm going to get that shot. Fantastic. I was like, well, I have this, so why don't I try it from another angle? So I came into the scene, photographed it, swapping pillows out, changing things up to try and get the right balance. Right? Did that, was happy with the final result. I was like, let me just try one thing. So there was a woman walking by, a beautiful flowy black dress. I was like, ma'am, could you please just eh, eh, and back out for me? It was done. It was good. My camera was on a tripod. I was all set up. So I just, and actually with this, this is an example of knowing your camera, right? Because I didn't have a lot of time. I was set, it was maybe a, because I wanted some depth of field in there, it was maybe like a two second exposure. If someone walks through my frame at a two second exposure, they're not going to be in my frame, right? It's too long. You're not going to see them. They're just going to be, it's like a Casper passing through your frame. Um, so I asked her and she jumped straight in. I was like, oh, I have to like, but sort of knowing my exposures and knowing I sort of, I, I think I was at a 15th of a second. I got it to maybe, a, yeah, about a 15th of a second to get her where it was still kind of blurred, but not tack sharp. And then I just adjusted my aperture and my ISO because I didn't want to lose too much of my depth of field. So I brought up my, my ISO a little bit. Um, and all of that happened within a couple of seconds because it was, sometimes you don't have the luxury of, please excuse me, let me just do this. Okay, so if I go to F5, 5, 5, 6, F8, well, if I do that, uh, ISO. No. You, knowing your camera and knowing your gear is so important because sometimes you're going to need to make these, these changes really quickly. Um, so that comes down to experience. That comes out to going out and photographing. Photographing in all kinds of environments, right? Because the more you photograph, the more comfortable you're going to feel. And so if something comes along and you need to quickly on the fly, just like, you know, you're able to do it. So shapes, shapes, geometry play such an incredibly important part in architecture and in interiors. Um, you know, these are the frameworks. These are the frameworks that we work within. Um, if, you, if you look at any architecture, it's a bunch of shapes, right? Even if it's really um, organic shapes, you know, your Zaha Hadid buildings with these beautiful curves, they're still shapes. You know, you're working with circles and ellipticals and squares and rectangles and all of this. So use that. Use those to help tell that story. You know, for me, again, this was an interplay between organic and inorganic. So 
the trees are my organic elements, the grass and the palm leaves. Um, and then you have this environment, this built environment, but they're copacetic. They work hand in hand. Um, and the structure is helping to shape the light. You know, and also on the bottom left here, you, know, you, have these little, you have this little geometry in the grass. This is helping to mirror what's happening on the roof of this structure. Right? So there's, a, there's a, a conversation that goes across the frame. If that wasn't there, and you kind of take it out, it's a little weird. It does, it's, not the same, it's not the same shot. But using those elements help tell the story. Same thing, using lighting, using buildings and structure and lighting to craft an environment to tell a story. This image I put in there, same thing, because it's, you know, you have your rectangle up the top, you have the circular sweep. You can break, the, break this up into blocks of shapes. And it's another example of shooting in the middle of the day to get a certain result. If I shot this in the morning, first thing in the morning, it wouldn't, it, it would be flat. There would be no direct lighting. Um, but for me, I love symmetry sometimes. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I really do. And I'll use that as a tool in my photography so that everything is, everything is balanced, right? If you take the guy out, maybe like the buildings in the background, you know, this is a mirror image. You can split it down the half, flip it, and the image is going to look the same. So taking that and then breaking it by putting a person in there, it adds interest. It adds something. It adds somewhere for the eye to go. This is a, a Lautner um, building. He's known for this kind of this architecture. So you make sure that you represent that when you're photographing. The uh, Itamaraty Palace in Brasilia, Oscar Niemeyer. Incre this city is amazing. Uh, it was basically like built from the ground up. This architect came in and he's like, hey, I'm going to build a city. It's going to kind of look like an airplane. They're like, great. Here's the money, off you go. And so Brasilia is the capital of Brazil. Um, incredible architecture. And this staircase, I just, I mean, it's, it's so beautiful. But there's something, to, there's something to the nature of this. And it was in a big open space. And everything was very angular and very structural. And then there's this beautiful sweeping staircase that is angular yet soft at the same time. It's really fascinating. It's a beautiful place. If you ever go to Brazil, go to Brasilia, check out his work. Palm Springs, you know, everyone knows Palm Springs. It's this like rocky desert environment with the palm trees. You know, what I found interesting with this property, and this is the same property of the woman with the pushing the door open. This is the exterior. Um, but for me, the, the image was about the structure in place. So it's about the environment and it's about the structure. So you have these hard lines in white and then mountains in the background with this kind of rocky outcrop and then a palm tree just shooting up into space. You know, for me, that told the story. Like You look at this and you're like, yeah, OK. That looks like Palm Springs. It looks like 107 degrees. <laughs> um, staging is something, especially when I'm working with interior designers, that we're doing all the time, right? Very seldom do we walk into a space and we're like, great, looks terrific, shoot, done, next one. It is a lot of work to get these spaces to where they need to be. And that's because sometimes what we see with our eyes doesn't always reflect in an image, right? So you have to like, we have to shuffle things, cheat things to make it represent in a photograph. So for this one, this is in Southampton, in New York, and a lot of it, you know, it's a very, it's a very beautiful space, right? And they have these pink pillows and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it was all a bit of a mess. The way the butterfly artwork was something else that just didn't work. Um, so we got in. We swapped out some artwork so it was in a comp complementary color palette. Um, brought in the greenery because I think it's important with that much greenery outside that it's then reflected on the inside as well. You know, bring the outside in, decision to have the door open, same thing. You feel like you can walk out there. You can walk out into that space. Um, 
So we brought the greenery in, put the purple flowers in the back, changed the, uh, changed the painting in the background, and it, it made it more cohesive. It made it a more um, cohesive space. In Savannah, Georgia, they, Savannah's famous for this Spanish moss that's everywhere. It's super beautiful. Um, and so I wanted to do, like, I was shooting the interiors of a plantation there. And, but I wanted to pepper that with vignettes of, like, just texture. Because I didn't want, when I presented the job to the client, I didn't want it all to be, like, interior, 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 wide shot, exterior. You know, I wanted to build a story, build a narrative, um, with, with this uh, presentation. So I would take these little vignettes and I would stage them up. They had this very cool um, sort of ram sculpture um, on the wall. Got some of that Spanish moss, peppered it over the top. So, and it's nice. It's just like a, it's a nice little um, room to breathe when you're viewing your images. You don't want to just keep hitting people over the head with the same thing over and over again. Sometimes you want to give room to breathe. Give some context, give some texture. Same thing, the image on the left, that was a, I cleared out a bunch of crap that was on the counter. Just pared it down. Sometimes less is more. Can tell more about the space with less. You know, just I like the pairing of this because, you know, the image with the hammock goes with the image of the room. You know that if you step out of that room, you can slide straight into that hammock. Sip on your cocktail. It just, it's about telling a story. Same thing with this. Sometimes staging is bringing a person in, like we talked about. Having someone fold towels. It just elevates it a little bit. So sometimes a single pop of color will bring more interest to a scene. So with this, just a um, grouping of coconuts hanging out in a very monochromatic color scheme. Sometimes that just draws the eye, gives a little bit more interest. Same with these. So look for those little moments. It's really important to in and out. You know, don't always be on one plane. So make sure uh, the space you're photographing is clean. So take a look at the space. Have a look around. Okay, you're gonna be taking stuff out because too much it distracts the eye. So go through, clean out your space, remove unnecessary items that clutter the, fr the frame, clean any dead plants or leaves off the ground if you're shooting exteriors. Just save yourself a bunch of time in post. You really don't want to be sitting there at 2 o'clock in the morning retouching out dead leaves off the exterior of someone's house. It's not cute. Um, keep your lines vertical and watch out for converging objects such as sofas intersecting with windows. So you know when you, when you look, take your photo and there's like, you know, something's colliding with another object, just pull it out, like pull sofas out, move things around so that everything has moved, room to move so that it can breathe. Um, fluff those pillows, um, adjust lampshades, because eh, sometimes and you get back and you realize that the lampshade's crooked and then you need to go into post and free transform it and you just hate your life. Um, check that curtains are draping correctly. Just all those little things, they all amount to something. So gear that I take, tripod, really important, especially when shooting interiors and architecture. Like, have your tripod. Um, then you can. Then you don't have to worry about like shooting fast. Right? You don't have to worry about your shutter speed. You can bring it way down. Um, if you're doing a stitch of images, exposure bracketing, then you know that if you lay one over the other, it's going to be the same. And then you can just paint in without having to worry about the image shifted. Um, tilt shift lens, is po if possible, it's great. If not. You know, you can do a lot of that in post. Um, some way to tether. So I'm a big fan of tethering while shooting. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, Cam Ranger has a terrific little product. It's about like this big, and it just plugs into your camera, and it sets up a Wi-Fi network to your um, to whatever. So I just have my I have my iPad, plug it into my camera, and every time I take a photo on my iPad, the camera clicks, and I can see it. Um, with Fuji cameras, they actually have a 
Um, on, actually, on some of the models now, they're Bluetooth enabled. So like when you start your camera, you just set up Bluetooth between that and your <laughs> iPad or iPhone, and you can just shoot straight through your phone, and it Bluetooth enables the images. Super cool function. Um, or the good old orange tether cable to your laptop. I tend not to do this just because I want to be a little bit more portable when I'm shooting. So if I have my camera and then my tether cable to my laptop and my laptop stand, it's a bit of a schlep, especially if you have to do a lot in a short period of time. Um, and a good, a good gear tripod head. Um, so this is the one that I use. Um, and it's terrific because you can make micro adjustments because so much of what we're doing is micro adjustments. Right? If you're trying to line up spaces, you're not cranking your tripod massive. It's little bit, little, just, just tweaking it. So something like this enables you to make small adjustments. It's really helpful. Um, Workflow-wise, I'll go into a shoot, um, bring it into Lightroom, and that's where I'll do my um, color control. That's where I'll open up my shadows or bring down my highlights if they're a little too burnt out. Um, and it's also where I catalog everything. So keywording is super important. Uh, if you guys know how that works, when you import, you can set keywords. So I'll set the name of the project, the destination. Um, so if I ever need to find, hey, like, I want to see all the photos that I took in Palm Springs. I can go in, search, and every photo I've taken in Palm Springs will come up. But it's also great when you're putting together your images, if you're putting them on your portfolio, um, is this gallery view. You know, bring up all of your images set a gallery view, and then you can drag them around to get a nice flow, to get a nice order, and then star rate them. I think star rating is really important. So you, know, the, you, you can hit the one, two, three, four, five to give it a certain number of stars. I've done that with every photo in my 200,000 plus catalog of images I have in Lightroom right now. Um, so if I, need, if I wanna find like, my hero images, you know, I'll just click four or five, and it'll show me every hero that I have out of 200,000 images. Um, it's a really useful tool. Um, always shoot raw, okay? So don't throw away any information. You have the option on your camera. You can shoot raw, raw and JPEG, or just JPEG. The JPEG files are fine, and they will look better than your raw files when you view them, right? But that's because they've been altered. They've been compressed. They've had some contrast, some sharpness, some such. But you're losing information. Shoot, shoot. Uh, raw and JPEG if you want, so you have like a preview file that looks good to you, but then go and work on that raw file because you have so much more leniency in that file and so much more information, okay? Um, but yeah, they're always gonna need tweaking. Number of times I've like, come back, I put my, I'm like super pumped about a shoot, I'm like, yeah, I did so well. I put them in, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Cool. But 10 minutes later, after you like, do your adjustments, you're like, yeah, it's a great image. I really like that. But it's just, you know, it needs a little bit of work. Um, there's a function for lens correction. All right? So you can use that. And whatever lens you're using, it'll help just to correct any distortion that's there. It's really useful. Chromatic aberration, which is that weird, like little lines, little blue and red lines you get silhouetting on, you know, if the sun hits it. I'll take that out. Um, so that's that. Um, a room should never allow the eye to settle in one place. It should smile at you and create fantasy. So this is Juan Montoya, a very famous designer. Um, I love this quote. Because you know what? Like, we want people to smile. Right? We take photos because we want to show beauty, but also we want to inspire people. So in the same way, you know, a designer may look at a room and want to give it a certain energy. We want to create that energy in our photos ourselves, right? So always photograph with intention. Photograph to tell people something, to tell them a story, to inspire them, to lift them up, you know? Make sure that people smile when they look at your photos because they're going to see you in that, and that's really important. And that's the gift that we have as photographers is to help make people smile. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>